Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 563, recorded Wednesday, March 28th, 2018. Hello, God. It's me, Paul. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website on wordpress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month, and you'll get 15% off any new plan at wordpress.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft. Hello, Paul Therott from therott.com. Boston Hello. guy transplanted planted to Lower Mukunji Valley. <laughs> Hello, Mary Jo Foley. Once a Manhattan night, never leaving the island. Never. 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 Uh, these two make up two <laughs> of the best, the best Microsoft journalists in the business. Mary Jo Foley reports for ZDNet at all about Microsoft.com. Paul Therott does whatever it is he does at yeah, Therott.com. <laughs> T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T.com. And each week... Every Wednesday, except for uh, when Microsoft Build's going on, because uh, we, yeah. we're going to do that one on Monday. We'll explain that later. That's not till June. We get together. We talk about the latest news from Microsoft. I got really confused. <laughs> I was so embarrassed on the radio show. Mm -hmm. The guy calls up, says, well, <clears throat> I have uh, 1728 on one machine and 1721 <laughs> on, one, on the other machine. Uh, and I think it's a. It says RS uh, RS three RS four. Uh, and I said, "Oh, you got Redstone." Oh, oh, I see. I'm trying to explain yeah. in real time without a cheat sheet. Right. <laughs> what the hell's going on? He says, well, "Which version should I have?" And I said, "You should get off the Insider program. Yeah. yeah. And be normal." If, you, if you're like... asking that question. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> should That's I have funny. 17? Because honestly. I should I should have known immediately when you said those numbers what you meant and I was confused. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 17, yeah. What? Yeah. And yeah. I still don't but, know okay. what 1803 is called. None of us uh, know. Is it is it <laughs> Then I got I got all confused cuz of skip ahead and I thought if for a while he was on Redstone 5. It was yeah. very God, confusing. Right. It was nightmarish. Right. But I yeah. I tried I think I think at the at the end I finally explained to him, well, Microsoft does AB testing. Some people get different you you might have different versions of betas on different machines is that right you might have different features sometimes like sets but not well, different some numbers. people got it <laughs> so so, so this, this is uh, i don't want to get too far afield here but um if it if it's 17 to something it's rs5 yeah uh, like yeah. mary just said That's they have right. done a b testing on individual features and then for whatever it's worth i don't know i can't explain this but when the latest build came out I'm sorry, before the latest build, there was one build before this. I uh, had updated a couple machines, and the ARM machine did not get that build. Yeah. But now that the oh, latest weird. build is out, it did get this build. So it, hmm. it skipped one build. I, I can't quite explain that, but it might just have been something and ARM specific. And it's possible, yeah, you yeah. just didn't get the, you know, one machine didn't get updated yet, but they'll be the same. Yeah. But uh, but skip ahead really threw me. That was where I... Yeah. <laughs> That was well, listen, uh, you think it's bad it just trying to us. This stuff Imagine if you were Microsoft and had to support this stuff. I know. Oh, gosh. You know, I, I can't know. even imagine the matrix uh, that they must no. have to keep track and of. That's the why way, they're doing quantum computing. It's the only way they can figure it out. <laughs> and by the way, the first thing I said was, it's really, you know, I, I commend Microsoft because mass beta testing is really the best way to figure out if an operating system, you know, has bugs or not. Although oh, I have I some that, questions yeah. about how, to me, this might merely be a marketing effort because, well, sometimes they have mass testing and still bugs oh, come listen, out. Like when the, the Kindle Google crashed model. the computer yeah, and all people's cameras broke. It's like, well, are you telling tell me that none of the Windows Insiders had had cameras? Yeah. Um, sometime last year, I, I, I think it was last year. Maybe it was it had to do with Surface. I don't remember anymore. But I, I had uh, sort of brought up the notion that Microsoft needed a reliability initiative, kind of like they had that security 
initiative. Trustworthy uh, computing. A thing. long time, yeah. yeah, a long time ago, and um, yeah, I still wonder about that stuff because uh, you mm -hmm. know Netscape kind of was like this back in the '90s. Uh, Google obviously is like if this. You're doing, Apple's if you're, run into trouble like this. If you're testing. <laughs> With a, more than a million people, which I figure there's got to be more than a million people on the Insider program, right? Yeah, there are several millions. Yeah. I, it was Wouldn't you find a problem like most of the cameras not working? Wouldn't you know okay, that? Okay, so I didn't intend to talk about this, but I will. I just want to point <laughs> out that I – well, I sort of raised this issue recently when I talked about things like telemetry data and yeah. how Microsoft relies mm -hmm. on Are you paying attention? Systems. Yeah. Well, no, I, I actually I, – I think the way I put it was – Data is important, but how you use the data is more important. more important. And I yes. actually feel there's a yes. giant disconnect yes. at Microsoft between what they're being told, what they're listening to. And I think there's kind of a bias towards wanting to hear feedback that confirms what they already believe. Ah. You know, I, I just see too much of that kind of stuff. Mm. It's um it's a hard topic. It's it's a um, but that's that's a great example of it. Um, yeah. yeah. And so they fight they always fight the last battle like we always do, you know. Uh, they fixed the issue. No Kindle will ever bring down Windows 10 again. So <laughs> you can you can you can, you can rest be assured. sure of that. Yes, that we have solved that problem. <laughs> the Kindle one I kind of understand because it's not. I mean, but the cameras. It was like most of the cameras, even Microsoft's own cameras, broke. Mm -hmm. Sure. So anyway, anyway, that's a old. That's last year. Here we are. Well, uh, we are. It's the, an ongoing problem. It is. It's, it's, it is an ongoing it's, problem. It's an ongoing yeah. issue. I kind of. I kind of ended up the whole discussion <laughs> after I told him get off the insider program and get normal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Which you'll be yeah. able to do as soon as you get this whatever it is eighteen oh three. Yep, that's my tip. Don't ruin it. And <laughs> and then I said, but I really have to wonder if how much of this is mere marketing that Microsoft understands that there's there's fanatics, there's enthusiasts who want to have the latest, greatest, and they yeah. want to be the ones that say, hey, yeah, I got the yeah, latest. Yeah. And remember, and, I'm sorry. Well, I just wonder how much they're paying attention. Um, you, <laughs> yeah, so do I. That's the yeah. Is anybody out there? Hello, God, it's me, Paul. Um, <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wonder the same exact thing, and then you know, this I've is been the listening to you too school. long, obviously. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the um, I, you know, they can fix things, right? And so we we used yeah. to be on a system where there was a patch Tuesday every month, right? Yeah, they can arbitrarily fix bugs and re reboot your computer any day of the week now. So, right, right. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm sure there's uh, you know high quality folks that think they're shipping high quality software, and their aim is to never have to do that. Um, but the reality, and you go just look it up, is they do it all the time. Yeah, bugs happen. What and, are you going to do? That's yeah. that's life in the big city. Yeah. Well, you're, what you could do <laughs> was develop a system that makes higher quality software. Yeah, you are a software maker. That's a, that's a yeah. surprisingly challenging. Job. Thing yeah. to do, yeah. especially when you have hundreds of millions of lines of code, and yeah. and they have so many different combinations and permutations of things they'd have to that's test right. it on, right? Yeah. Like that's right. Frankly, here I'm, I am it, using, you know, whatever HP, blah blah blah, but I might have something installed that somebody else doesn't you know have installed. I I, I, I buy mm -hmm. that. I I have a. I said this about Microsoft versus Apple twenty years ago. You know that the, the fact that Windows PCs boot up every day and people get work done all around the world is a miracle, given all the configurations <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. why isn't the system architected better? Why yeah. why could plugging in a Kindle bring down a computer? You know, well, it, it, do I have to worry every time I pick up a USB memory stick that if I put this thing in my computer, you know, a bomb's going to go off or, you know, the roof's yes. going to collapse or whatever. <laughs> I mean, like it's it's such a it, it's such a it shouldn't be this fragile. Yeah. But it is. Yeah, By the way, I just got my I just got my meltdown patch on the Dell Optiplex, this ancient desktop mm -hmm. I had today. Well, and it was like, oh, nice. do you want to have, you you have your firmware reboot your system now? And this is right before Windows Weekly. I'm like, oh. Oh, this so is you a did, bad so you, idea, but uh, yes. But you did. It. I, I <laughs> assume. I yeah. assume that you enjoyed what I what I take to be a text based screen, where little squares go across and it's, yeah. it's writing <laughs> yep. blocks and stuff. I was like, oh, oh, I we're should back have done to this. DOS days. We're back to <laughs> DOS days. Yeah. Yeah. How many uh, basic? How many bits free did you have in Commodore Basic? <laughs> Yeah. That mode. Did you notice? And it, it took a while too. I was sitting here like, okay, this is probably a dumb idea that I did this, but no, here no, we are. No, 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 no. Because Leo's always <laughs> late, so you have plenty of time. So, um, here we are. You know, the vernal yes. equinox has passed us. Yes, Leo, you are a master of time and space. Again, <laughs> I, I can't believe <laughs> how much of this stuff you understand. As E. e. Cummings <laughs> but, might have said, spring has sprung.
Yeah. Oh, so, well, you should come over to here, uh, this part of the country, Leo, because I can tell you the spring has sprung a hole and it's leaking all over winter. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, do you still have snow? <laughs> we still have some snow on the ground, although it, it was raining overnight, so it'll, I haven't, it'll, uh, it'll it's going to go away. away. It'll wash away. Wow. Spring when the world is mud, as E.E. E. Cummings said. Yes. Luscious, the little lame balloon man whistles far and we. Oh, I remember that poem. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So now that the little balloon man is man whistling. Man <laughs> Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> and now that the little balloon man is whistling far yes. and we, do we have an update? Are, are we ready to muggleize? Yeah, we think we are. We're getting there. We think so. Yeah. Okay, so but that's that. Microsoft won't say so far that this is. They have not RTM. said, but this is clearly. And it's. If it's not this, it's going to be a point something of this. You know, this is, yeah. I think, it. And, and Mary Jo, you say you think this is actually going to be called the Spring Creators Update, really? You know, they still haven't given us a name. That name's leaked out in a few different places wow. over time. And at this point, if. They don't have another name. Um, yeah. What's the difference? It's getting late. <laughs> Redstone 4 works. Yeah. Spring Crazy yeah. Update. I like okay. Redstone 4. I really do. 1803 is perfect. I don't know why they can't yeah. just do that. So, right. Yeah. So, so, so there have been places that yeah. it's been called it's, that. It has. Yeah. Now that's yeah. not going to be confusing because we had a Spring Creators update yeah, right. last year. That's not going to. That's not going to. Well, that was actually yeah. just called the Creators update. Oh, that yeah. was the original Creators update, and then there mm -hmm. was the fall. Oh, well, this, but that would make sense. They're going to get yeah, into then overloading what do we call this, this fall. fall. They keep doing it. Overloading yeah. starts this fall. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, by the way, like I said, Xbox does the same thing. It's Spring yeah. update, you know, fall update, some November update, sometimes whatever. They never put a year on actually, it. So in a way, that's kind of reassuring. It's just you know, like the seasons. Except. Except sometimes there's the old spring update and the new spring update also both in support at the same time. Yeah, right. That, right. right. That, no, that's true. Uh, I I guess, you know, again, this is this is just semantics. I mean, it, it kind of doesn't matter. But Call it bothers me when people <laughs> refer to Windows 10 version anything as anything something something update because the update is yeah. the thing that brings it to that version. I don't true. think Windows 10. Oh, now version, that is you know, really free. picky. That is really. Yeah. That's why I said it was semantics. <laughs> but I, you know, but it's version, not the version you're getting. Le you're Leo, getting Leo, Leo, the update. Listen to me, okay. Leo. Yeah, this is important. <laughs> it's not an update. It's, it's a, a release. <laughs> it's a semi-annual <laughs> channel. <laughs> listen, just gotta, to be precise. I have to oh, live for a suck. reason. You got to give me this. I'm sorry, sack. Sack. What, it's a sack. <laughs> Yeah, Semi-annual channel. Semi channel. Sack. Sack. <laughs> anyway, all right, when, 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 when? It's going to start happens? rolling out in April, Somebody. we know, well, to mainstream. I believe but it's we don't uh, have the, the end of March date. right now. Yes, we should be very rumors soon. about this, didn't we? Um, as yeah. As soon as, oh, I think people were talking about Patch Tuesday. which is Yeah, the first Patch Tuesday. Tuesday. The 10th, uh, is well, that right? April 10th or somewhere around there. Because they tend to roll these, start rolling them out on Patch Tuesdays. So, yep. so oh, that's interesting. So the first, so Tuesday actually is the third of April. So it could be as soon as well, the, the second Tuesday second is traditionally Tuesday. second Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so it'd be the tenth. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, that makes sense. We're, that's a guess when yeah. it may start rolling. That makes sense. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I don't remember. Someone was talking about this on Twitter, but I don't. I know. I saw that too. Uh, maybe it was um, Zach at Windows Central. Zach Bowden, maybe. No. Somebody was. What are we? So, uh, so, the, so you're using no. pro, in all likelihood, Paul. You're using the RTM or something off. I better be. Close. I just switched every one of my computers over to this thing. So you have confidence. This is the final. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, if it isn't literally the final, um, and there are always these updates that occur between whenever they finalize right. it, whenever they release it to mm -hmm. the public. So there's going to be cumulative updates. This, it, they could rev this thing. There could be another build to the Windows Insider program that's. This build number point, you know, two or three or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is clearly it, um, as clear as it can be, we given done. the mud that we're given. We yeah. done. Yeah. So, uh, anything new? Uh, I mean, are we kind of these? They must have frozen no. features months ago. Yeah, we're we were just reviewing <laughs> well, the features ago, because you know what? You kind of forget because we get all caught up yeah. in like this build has this little thing and this right. build has that. But if somebody says to you, what is in Redstone 4? What what am I going to get when I get Redstone 4? And then you have to go back and go, okay, what are you going to get in Redstone 4? Well, I mean, timeline is the obvious, right? 
it's well, that's the big one. But honestly, I don't think a lot of people are going to even notice timeline. <laughs> you know, I know, it's kind of because um, the apps aren't ready for it, right? So, well, you know, that's interesting. So let me see if I what I get on this computer because it's this is different. But I was looking at this on my other computer, and yeah, so on this computer, it actually shows Markdown uh, Markdown Pad too, which is the you know the mm. text editor that I okay. use. There's no way that app supports this feature natively; it isn't supported. Uh, mm. The app itself, that is. Um, it shows websites. I'm using Edge right now, so I don't know yeah. what that means exactly. I don't see any Chrome stuff in here. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, it's unclear. Maybe if it's document-based, it just happens. I, I'm just guessing there because I can't explain why Markdown Pad would be in there. Yeah. But like I said, I don't see any Ed, um, Chrome activity. I don't think Chrome is supposed to be in there at all, right? I don't see it. No. So that would that kind of make – I only have a few days of data, unfortunately. Yeah. On, on this computer. Yeah, so sets didn't make it in. Sets is a Redstone 5 thing, but timeline is. So it, it would have been better if you had timeline and sets together because then I think that would have made it work more like what people are thinking it's going to be like. Exactly, um, because you could go back to a point in time and say, <laughs> right. open this thing in a set. Right. You know, and it could be all of those application windows at that point in time yep. in its own, you know, kind of single window with tabs. Yeah, yeah, but that's not going to be there yet. So it's like timelines, there's no sets. Um, but another one that is there, because we, we've been covering it, and especially Paul has, PWA is there, PWA mm -hmm. support. Um, yeah. In fact, today we saw a partial list of the sessions that are going to be at build, and PWA is listed as one of them. So thank Finally. goodness they're going to talk about that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, seriously, they, really, they haven't advertised anything like that. I know. Uh, ever, <laughs> if yeah. I'm not mistaken. I mean... I yeah, so that's good. So, yeah. <clears throat> how how does that appear? Do you uh, do you go to the store and well, then can yeah, you tell so what's happening? Even I mean, no, no, no. I mean, um, if they didn't tell you, because, you wouldn't know. That's right, and 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 that's the point, right? And it, you, you could go back know. to Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could go back to Windows eight, and and the application platform at that time supported development using various languages and uh, various frameworks and so forth. And one of them was JavaScript. And so uh, I think the early um, you know, mail calendar apps and so forth were Windows Live productions. They were done in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And if you if you weren't told that, I don't think anyone would look at that app and say, this is a web app. You know, like I right. I don't think anyone would ever know that. Um, and so, yeah, the goal with PWA is that there they should just be more apps in the store. And hopefully, mm -hmm. and for some people, they might be familiar, right? Because some of the famous ones that we see out in the world will probably appear in the store. And uh, if you use them on Android or whatever, you, you say, "Oh, I'm you know I know this app. Yeah. Like this is this is what I want to see on Windows as well." Well, like Twitter's an example, right? Twitter's going to mm -hmm. be PWA app in the store, yeah. supported yeah. In, in Redstone Four. So, That's right. yeah, it's interesting though. Like it, the the way you will know it works is if people don't know that they're using a yeah. PWA. That's exactly. Basically, <laughs> if you want to people, investigate, you could probably look on the disk and see man manifests and stuff, right? There'd be some sort of Yeah, you could you could try to discover why a 245 byte PWA has turned into a 10 megabyte <laughs> UWP, <laughs> you know, because of all the unbelievable, you know, cladding that they have to throw around it. Um and then there are the really technical people, like I just two people on Twitter is it kind of classic right before this the show were complaining. Well, I was complaining about this um you know, please review my app pop-up that appears in the Twitter app now. And uh, it's like, oh, it's a great first impression of PWAs. It's like, what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> the, hey, this has nothing to do with PWAs. This is the store popping this thing up. It's a store process. But more to the point, nobody, th nobody's having first impressions of PWAs. There's no impression having, at all. First, right. Yeah, it's an impression of an app. You but know, it, it's, but it, it started, the app started uh, as, a, as a web page. So you... Or, yeah. or do you go to the store? To, I mean, you get it as a no, way. you go to the store. So oh, you go to the in, store. In, okay. Yeah. In RS4, discoverability only happens through, and actually I should say, installation only happens through the store. Microsoft has talked about their desire to have these PWAs pop up in search results. If I, if you went to search and said, I want a Twitter app, you know, at the topic, it's, hey, you're running Windows 10. You should, you know, click here to install the Twitter app. Right. Um, but that does not, that's not happening in RS4. Um, so that's something, something for the future. That's how it works in Android, right? You you just come across a website that is a PWA and it advertises itself either very explicitly with a banner at the yeah. bottom or you can just go through the, you know, the menu add to, I think it says add to home mm -hmm. screen or whatever the, the text is. 
Okay. I mean, in theory, you could also get it uh, eventually. You'd be able to get it in a web browser, right? You'd browse yeah, to it. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. That's the plan. But so for right now, all right. And will it say in the store, like, you know, have some special mark that says PWA? It has the, it is a 666 right under the about box. <laughs> the mark, um, the mark of the beast. Um, yeah, it's, right it's there. name okay. is Legion. Okay. It's version number is Legion. Uh -huh. um, no, I don't believe there's, they're going to call it out in any way. Um, no, just like right now, you don't know something's a hosted web app in the store, right? I mean, it, there's nothing that right. says, this is a That's hosted right. web app, right? It's UWP. Right, exactly. They don't. But, uh, yeah. People don't think like this. Nobody, you know, we didn't call out yeah. the fact that it was a C++ app before either. So right. I, I, normal people, no people. I mean, most people just don't care about that kind of thing. No. People just don't understand. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> once they do. Once they do. Uh, yeah. Are we in S mode yet? S mode? Are we smodified? <laughs> So that should yeah. be something that arrives around the time of Redstone 4, that um, there'll yeah. be S mode for Windows Home, Windows Pro, and Enterprise. That sh those should all be ready to go. So um, this, is a, this is something I'm very curious about. There's two yeah. ways that this is going to pop up. One is going to be on new PCs, and we know right. there'll be Windows 10 Home and Pro systems that will be shipping in S mode mm -hmm. sometime in the next three to six months or whatever, um, and probably it intensifies over time. But Microsoft releases ISOs for people to download of uh, Windows yeah. 10 so they can install yeah. the system cleanly or whatever. And the version that they have today for uh, 1709 does include Windows 10 S. And I'm expecting that the version they'll release for RS4 will include mm -hmm. both Windows 10 Home and Pro in S mode as choices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that you, you know, because that's what you would want if you. Uh, well, <laughs> it might be what you want if you got a computer that came in S mode and you liked S mode. That's what you wanted, and you were going to blow away the system and use Microsoft's uh, web-based tools to do it. It's that should be an option, and it was for the mm -hmm. last one, so I think it will be for the next one too. Yeah. Yeah, and and switching will be free for everyone. Microsoft did confirm that. So if you if yep. you use. Per, um, S mode in any of the versions of Windows, you'll be able to move off of it for free and not pay that $49 yeah. that you were going yeah. to have to pay. <laughs> yeah. Does this impact <laughs> our uh, our beautiful little uh, HP Envy X2s in any way? Yeah, a little bit. So I, I have a little bit in the notes about that machine and I'd like to touch on that. We'll get to that. Then, right. If that's yeah, okay. Because that. Yeah. That is a, a big... It's a big part of the story because Windows 10 on ARM is an interesting, it's not right to call it a subset or a superset, but it's a it's something over the side of S mode. Um, because mm. even when you're not in S mode, you're kind of still in S mode, <laughs> you yeah. know, in some right. way. It's interesting. Yeah. It, it's 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 a different thing again, which is great because this isn't complex enough already. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it S mode or not? It's not considered well, S no, mode. What I mean, okay. So I, I wanted to nope, hold. Save, save it. Okay, save it. Save it. Let's talk about. Let's save it. Let's save it. W D A G. Yeah. In so Fresno. You know, <laughs> we don't. We don't know a lot about the enterprise features and or the security features yet in Redstone Four. Like we've had little hints of the, about some of them, but. We haven't had a, like a whole giant blog post of things like here's all the stuff you're going to get if you're a business customer. Figure they're they're going to do that at some point. But one of the things they did talk about is Windows Defender Application Guard um, going to pro and not just being limited to enterprise. So that's a really big deal because WDAG uses Hyper-V to isolate potential malware and exploits. So it kind of like containerizes something that could be malicious. And this is a feature that frankly, would be good for everyone, but at least now it's going to be in pro as of Redstone 4. Hmm. Okay. But otherwise, I was trying to think of like other enterprise-y things. Like we've heard, we've had little bits and pieces of kind of tweaks they're making, but is there any other big enterprise feature that we've heard about for Redstone 4? I don't think I, so. I got to be honest. Um, I don't think there are any truly big features in this except for yeah. our timeline. And yeah. because that's not really going to impact that many people, you could kind of make mm. the argument it's not itself a big yeah. feature. So True. in some ways, this release does satisfy your call for I know. an R2 release, right? Because it, yeah. it, it, you know, obviously there are tons of little improvements and I'm sure, and I'll mm -hmm. do this because I'll be updating the book like an idiot as I go through it. You, I'm going to, I'll notice 100 tiny little changes, but as far yeah. as, um, as big stuff, yeah, I don't know that there is any. I, I would I would say that the fluent design changes 
are going to be the most noticeable to most people. Because and it's especially true if you use the built-in applications. I know you won't you won't see it, but you know, in things like Microsoft <laughs> Edge or um, a bunch of the other built-in apps, uh, Mail and Calendar actually too. You know, there's there's a lot more translucency effect going on. I, I like it. I mean, I I, I I sort of understand the need for a for this to get everywhere else in the system, and b for there to be choices, right? Because right now we have yeah. that one style. It's called acrylic. I think it looks good, but I think there's room in there for three to five or whatever number of other, not themes, but whatever, you know, uh, whatever you want. I don't know what to call it. It's like a filter almost. Um, yeah. Different styles mm -hmm. of some kind. But, um, I, you know, it's kind of lipstick on the pig in a way, but I I, mm. I, I think it's attractive, not the pig thing, the, um, the acrylic <laughs> stuff in Windows. You know, it's like, um, it just gives it a nice, it, it's... I don't know, people miss arrow glass. It's kind of a little bit like that, yeah. except nicer and it's more It's like when modern. you move when you move your cursor on a menu, it l makes it a little lighter, so you it can see where your cursor is. It kind of ripples as you go, and it, yeah, things like the under the stuff under the cursor responds right to the cursor going over it, like a stone skipping across a pond. But it gives you a nice. visual cue <laughs> <laughs> that something will happen if you select that thing yeah. that you know is animating. Yeah. In fact, you know, I, I joke about how I can't see Fluent and I think it's kind of like, oh, who cares? They're making it prettier. But if you if you listen to Microsoft talk about Redstone 4 and in their yeah. developer sessions, the thing they always call out, like when they say, what's the biggest thing that developers should notice about Redstone 4? They always call out Fluent, always. They're like, this is the big thing. Like, yeah. this is going to be big, you know? Mary Jo, the new version of Calculator is a game changer. It, guys, <laughs> once once Notepad gets fluent, I don't know if I'll I'll be able to oh, live. I have yeah. bad news for you uh, with regards to that. Uh, <laughs> I think they're it's, not going to do it. I don't think they're going to because it's a desktop app, right? I, I, I mean, know. it's more likely that Notepad just they'll gets make, deprecated. Yeah, no, or they make Notepad UWP at some point, right? Yeah, they'll call it Notepad 3D, and you'll be able to insert <laughs> 3D emojis into your text. Yeah, that'll be amazing. Yay! <laughs> Can't wait. The little dinosaur over there in the corner doing like 3D punches at you while you're trying to write. Uh, uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, uh. yeah. <sighs> we are going to get I better privacy settings, and that's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, Yeah. there's going to be some new privacy settings okay. in Redstone 4. Okay. There's yeah. going to be um, the diagnostic data viewer. So it shows you the telemetry data that Windows 10 devices are sending to Microsoft. And then you have something that also lets you delete that. Um, data. You can't shut telemetry off. That's not part of Redstone 4. Uh, but at least you're, again, getting a little more granular, giving people at least the illusion of more control. Um, so that'll be in this this release when it comes out. And the other thing, um, which I feel like we talk about a lot on the show, uh, lots of Windows subsystem for Linux tweaks <gasps> are in this. Linux! Um, <laughs> You know, nothing that's Jeez. like, wow, unbelievable, but like lots of little niceties. I think we talked one time about um, sockets working across Windows and Unix and, um, you know, like lots of little things that people who um, want to use Linux on Windows would appreciate, especially people who are systems administrators. Do, do we add something to, I don't see it, but is there something in the notes about the sideloading capabilities that they just announced? No. No. So actually, this is kind of a big deal. I, 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 I read about it on my own site. It's pretty good. You should go there. It's called throat.com. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I, wait a minute. I have to interrupt. I've just been flo shown the Fluent Calculator. Oh, yep. my God. Right? I Game am, changer? It's, it, um, yeah. <laughs> it's Leo. My God. No, but, no, but make it full screen. If they do this, I can only imagine what Notepad's going to be like. I know. Okay. What looks different, guys? Seriously, like what's different about it? It's fluent. You can see the background through the back. <laughs> see? Okay, but see, it's kind of hazy. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like it's a hazy it's like day of summer. Like macular degeneration or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah nice. like a little like, blurry. Mother, okay. mother, <laughs> are you there, mother? I can. If see you like you. shiny blurry things, you're gonna love yeah. fluent. Shiny right. blurry things. This yeah. is RS four. <laughs> That could be their tagline. I'll let them shiny, use that. Shiny, blurry things. Shiny, blurry things. <laughs> That'll be your quote in the ad. It'll be like, if you like shiny, blurry things, this is for you. You will Marjorie. love Redstone 4. Mother? Is that you, Mother? 
<laughs> were we talking about WSL or were you done? I can't remember. Yeah, what, oh, what's no. the so, side loading um, thing? Yeah, so Microsoft announced today that they're going to allow individuals to sideload what? their own Linux distribution oh, yeah. into WSL. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So in other words, if, if you like some obscure Linux distribution, Paul Linux or whatever, and uh, you don't have to wait for it to be in the store, you can, as an individual, side just sideload it yourself. And this, th I think that answers the final well, that big complaint, such as it is, for no, this thing, right? No, I mean, this is close to will, that, uh, <laughs> will that, out of curiosity... Mm -hmm. require the cooperation of the distribution manufacturer. Yeah, that's what I, that's what so, I thought. I thought the distributors yeah, had to they have to agree, make some sort of right? package cuz no okay. installer does that. I got this information secondhand from a disreputable website, but my understanding <laughs> Thanks was for that the an individual clarification could do it. there. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I think because I would think it would be it would kind of be like, you know, when they were doing Android apps on Windows, it was like, yeah, you can just yeah. take any Android app and no. put it in the store, yeah, but not no. really, right? Not without help, <laughs> not without a bridge. Hmm. I'm looking because um, I know yeah, see Peter how they, Bright. See how they word it. I'm looking for Peter Bright. I'm like, maybe Peter Bright will have the word. <laughs> I'm looking for a, another disreputable third party website. I know. So yeah. I assume. Um, um, Let's see. I'm kidding. I love Peter, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Microsoft has an open source tool for building your own uh -huh. Linux package. Aha. Uh -huh. So they yeah, have I a think, tool. I think so you can do, do it yourself. That makes sense. Yeah, you can. I think yeah. So. But yeah, what would that, what would but that wait, include? The tool, the tool is aimed at two groups, distribution owners, <laughs> yeah. so they can produce a bundle for the right, store, right. and developers, well, so they can create it, custom distributions it, it inside the form oh. of an aux script. And yeah. um, so it's not it's not something an end user. Well, I mean, if you're sophisticated enough to do that, I guess. Well, if you're a yeah. system admin who relies on Linux and you're using some whatever, it doesn't matter what version it is. And that thing's not in the WSL. And that's what you want. And that's what it will take for, to get you to use Windows 10. I mean, it's that's so pretty cool. it's safe to say, then, that the uh, kernel emulation is pretty complete, that you can run anything you want on uh, WSL if it's, uh, you know, if it's Linux compliant. Is I feel like true? we didn't discuss this properly before, but yes, you know that yes, Windows <laughs> is Linux now, right? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Satya loves Linux, so yeah, Windows yeah. is Linux. That's it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the tool is called WSL Distro Launcher. It's in yeah, GitHub. Yeah, because what it's doing, I imagine, is stripping out the actual Linux <laughs> so that <laughs> you can use the Linux you sure. know, emulation sure. layer. And then you just, it copies, it's like taking the icing off of a cake and putting it and on your Windows it on machine. cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, it's, it's a cake. It's not, it looks like the cake. <laughs> it if, tastes if, a little bit like a cake. If you like it's icing, it's, you know, it's all the icing, but none of the cake. Okay. That's, no, that's, okay. that's not really fair because it's not the cake. It's mm -hmm. more like um, a hamantashen without the poppy seed filling. Wow. I can't, that's... <laughs> That's very Easterish, isn't it? <laughs> Passover, Easter. Yeah, yeah, it's this time of year. It's, it's like a, a time of year. Turkish bath, but it's dry. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, okay. Can you spell exactly. hamantash? Like closet uh, is what you say. Well, yeah, H A M M E N T A S C H E N. <laughs> hmm. <It's laughs> Linux leaves makes the very Linux. best. Hamantash Linux. Linux. Yep. I'm sure there is one. Yep. Uh, all right. Let's yep. take a little break because now I'm <laughs> focused on Hamantaschen and I would right, like let's get one. Snacks. Let's get snacks. It's snack time. Uh, everybody run and get a snack while Leo does uh, his best impression of Fireman Brad. No, while I no, that's not true. I'm going to do a little ad, an advertisement. A word, as they used to say in the old radio shows from our sponsor in this case, a very, a mighty fine sponsor, the number one mortgage lender in the country. Okay. Okay. Now we're talking. Quicken Loans is uh, not only number one in your hearts, because they are, in fact, eight years in a row, number one in customer satisfaction, according to J.D. Power, for mortgage origination for the last four years in a row for mortgage servicing. So, you know, that pretty much covers the waterfront when it comes to home loans. They're also number one in volume now. That just happened. And I want to take a little bit of credit for it, but really I should give all the credit to their newest mortgage approval tool, Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage takes what was a fairly antiquated process, you know, putting on pants, going to the bank, asking the banker, please, sir, can I have a loan? 
Loan? Well, fill this out in triplicate, and we'll think about it. And you fill out the long form. You give it to the banker, then they call you, and they say, you need to fax us. Go to the facsimile machine and fax us pay stubs from the year 2012. Which means you're on a mission to get pay stubs from six years ago. And, well, this can go on and on and on. Last time we bought a house, which admittedly was in 2014... Uh, actually, 2013, Lisa and I uh, did get it from a big bank and did all of that and did fax them pay stubs. And we faxed them uh, ad infinitum, ad nauseum, if you don't mind a little Latin thrown into your Quicken Loans ads. Uh, they uh, took us, I think, the, this bank, this big bank, you know, the one with the, the whips and the horses. Uh, it took us about two months to get a loan, which was kind of a problem because the, the seller was getting a little antsy and we were on vacation and we were still faxing them stuff. Look, quick, this is so much better. Quicken Loans Rocket Mortgage is a uh, really a client-centered technological reinvention of the mortgage approval process. You could do it all online. That's big right away, right? No going to the bank at all. Uh, you could do it from your couch. You could do it from an open house. You could do it on your smartphone. Just go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And they'll ask a few simple questions you already know the answer to. Then, because they have relationships with all the financial institutions, with your permission, they get the information they need. They go to the attic, in effect, and get the information they need. Crunch the numbers. Then, based on your income, your assets, your credit, they make you an offer. They tell you which loans you qualify for. You can, at that point, choose your rate, your term, your down payment. It's completely transparent. You know every step of the way what's going on, and then, boom. You got a mortgage or I should say a refi as well. You don't have to be buying a house. You could be refinancing your existing house and interest rates are starting to trend up. As you've probably noticed, now might be a good time to lock in a lower interest rate at Rocket Mortgage. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows is the address. Bookmark that or better yet, set up the account so you'll be ready when that perfect home comes along. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states and MLS consumer access.org number. 3030 rocketmortgage.com slash windows. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. We are talking Microsoft. Um, I feel like we did this Windows 10 stuff. Yeah. Right? We did some I, of it, I yeah. I feel like we did, too. Uh, the, we didn't mention the HoloLens thing, though. RS4 on yeah. well, actually, the, the But the Fall Creators thing is kind of interesting because yeah. on the eve of... RS oh, fall creators update. Fall. Release. The next one. Yeah. Um, the current release just hit over 90% oh. usage across Windows 10 PCs. Oh, wow. What? Wow. what? That's, 90%? I believe unprecedented. Um, wow. In yeah. fact, I, I seem to recall in an earlier version, I don't remember which one it was, but uh, it had hit 75% at some point and, and kind of stuck there. And the feeling was that's probably the realistic top uh, because they're going to be enterprises that are running on older versions and so forth. And... Um, no, they just hit ninety percent. So that's actually um, really good news. That yeah, that really is good news. That that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, I don't just mean commercially. It means that you got a kind of a homogeneous user base, and they're all secure, you know, and up yeah. to date. I think that's really good. Yep. Well, as secure as you can be. Yep. Ninety percent. Wow. Yeah. And so that must be ninety percent of PCs that are eligible and where people want it, right? Uh, well, the only thing you can say about the data is that it should represent 90% of all Windows 10 PCs that are in use. And Are there Windows 10 the, PCs that couldn't do the Fall Creators update? This is, we're uh, talking about 17. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, probably, well, maybe, but think, let's yeah. just say, even if, but even if they are, technically they should be counted in this number. Okay. okay. Mm. It's only Windows 10 PCs, right? It's not earlier right, right. Windows versions. No, I was thinking also some enterprises, you know, are trying to hold back from going to the latest version because they're not ready. I mean, this also, you got to understand where the data yeah. is taken from, right? So it's it's uh, oh, yeah, data from apps right? yeah. and so forth. And so, it, yeah, it's, um, I can't say only consumer. There's no real way to say exactly. But yeah, yeah there are going to be enterprises where no one is running these any store apps that are providing mm -hmm. this kind of data and right. are not going to be counted, of course. But that's always been the case. Yeah. I mean, so... yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's like a fitness tracker. I don't know what it's measuring, but at least I can compare it to what it used to measure. And as long as they haven't <laughs> changed anything, it's still yeah. an interesting comparison. So 
we've never seen this level of deployment of a Windows 10 update, to my understanding. And if you think back to previous versions of Windows, you can look at usage share data from, you know, net market share or whatever. There's never been a circumstance. Well, actually, we don't know that. I was going to say there's never been a circumstance where a Windows version hit 90%. But I guess this would be mm -hmm. equated to like Windows 7 SP1 is probably above 90%. But we don't have any real way to know that. And there's also, it's a different world. I mean, they require you to update, right? I mean, you can't, you can only defer it so far and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, this, yeah. but that's good. I mean, honestly, but I it think shows that the process thing. is it's working, working right? Yeah. Getting better. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, it's not, of course, there's commercial reasons for this that Microsoft has, but I think for the mm. world in general, this is a good thing. Mm. Be over, yeah. over and above Microsoft's own personal, you know, need to have everybody on one version. It's good for mm. security. It's, it's good for stability. It's good uh, for good developers. For really too, good for developers. Right? Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's good. That's amazing in a way. Mm. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Uh, okay. RS4. Uh, we have an RTM Canon. We mentioned that. Uh, coming to the HoloLens. Is that a separate uh, build or is that? So it has the same build number. Um, but you know, when the, when you run Windows 10 on the Hololens, it's it's definitely suited for the Hololens. But what what's really interesting here, and I didn't realize this until this news came out this week, right. um, the Hololens didn't get updated with Windows 10 since the anniversary update. Oh, um, so wow. that was 2016, yeah. and so this is the first new Windows 10 version, um, particularly built for the Hololens since then. Um, and the first version went to testers of this uh, this week. Nice. Yeah, the complaints about that happening are so old now, I had forgotten about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that was yeah. uh, kind of a, an issue back in the day, you know, a year ago or a month, you know, months ago, whatever. And yeah, I'd, like you, I'd forgotten about it completely. Yeah. yeah. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, and uh, as, long as, we're in, as long as we're on the subject... Mm -hmm. Multi-session desktop app remoting support. Have we mentioned that in Redstone Five? No, I don't think I've ever Do heard we? of this Do until we? yes, good this, this week. Is, right? This is um, some information that I, I started seeing leaks about this, and people saying, you know what, I'm hearing there's some kind of a new remoting capability that Microsoft's going to put in Windows 10 soon, but I don't know anything about it. And then someone showed me something that showed. Um, Something called Windows 10 multi-session, like as a thing. And so you know the way right now you have to have a server um, if you want to use remote desktop services. It sounds to me like you're going to be able to use Windows 10 that way for a finite number of users. Not like a ton of users like you can with server, but maybe like a handful of users. And so the reason it sounds like the reason you'll be able to do this is before PCs weren't powerful enough and the operating system wasn't powerful enough to drive something like this. But now it is. And Microsoft's also trying to get people off of the GUI on server. So it makes a lot of sense to kind of make this more of a of a client thing. I don't have a lot of details about it. And, you know, different people are trying to put the pieces together here and figure it out. But of course, Microsoft's not willing to talk about it because it's sounds like it's Redstone 5, and it's definitely something they haven't announced yet. Hmm. But hmm. keep your ear hmm. to the ground for that one. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. It would be pretty, people who, people who understand this a lot more than I do, when, when I wrote about this, they're like, if you're right about this, this is yeah. going to be huge and a huge game changer. It's just like Calculator. <laughs> you know, calculator or multi-session. It's kind of the same thing, but, you know. No, you know why? It's because <laughs> a lot of a lot of admins uh, sit on multiple yep. machines all day. They do, yep. And so uh, this that's who really is happy about this is uh, yes. IT guys. IT pros. Yeah. Because yeah. they want to have, you know, multiple machines open. I've seen people do this in many situations. Yeah. Um, good. I didn't realize it didn't have that actually. So that's that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, it's Microsoft's licensing around remote desktop services oh, makes this super what, complicated that's, that's what and is. expensive. It's not technically <laughs> difficult, but it's licensing. Yeah. 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 Like I had people saying, "I already do this right now." And I'm right. like, "Yeah, but you do it illegally." Right. And the person's like, "Now I yeah. understand." <laughs> now I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah Thank yeah, you for yeah. telling me that. I'll report you to Microsoft <laughs> licensing. <laughs> now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so here we are two weeks in on the NVX2, the first Windows on ARM machine. I uh, yep. I actually find myself using it more. I've gotten uh, used to the sluggishness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like I had a stroke and I just kind of got used <laughs> yeah, to it. I just got used to it. <laughs> like, I have faster machines. Um, and in fact, it's kind of funny when I fire up the ThinkPad. <laughs> I go, wow, that thing's fast, but uh, but it's yeah, usable, yeah. I guess, is my point. What is your experience? So, I mean, I, I, I went through, uh, like, uh, it's like the seven stages of guilt, the seven stages of Windows 10 on ARM, you yeah, know, and yeah. um, I, I I wanted to test very specific things. So, like, I tested the battery life first. Yes, it was almost exactly 20 hours. Yeah, it's um, great. It's amazing. Uh, app compatibility, which is kind of an interesting topic, um, and this, this is the thing we kind of alluded to earlier, where... I, I talked about it it being like S mode, but kind of off to the side of S mode. So Windows 10 on ARM on this machine, and I think on all machines in this first gen, ships in S mode, right? Or it didn't, because it's 1709, it ships in with Windows 10 Pro, I'm sorry, Windows 10 S, which is Pro in S mode, right? That's, that is how it ships. Mm -hmm. But you, you could, of course, switch to Pro, full Pro. And when you do that, you get application compatibility with the desktop. And of course, that's something that you, you and I both did immediately. I did on purpose, knowing that I would be going back to S mode at some point and really? test it properly. Yeah, okay. although it, I, the, this is where I'm heading. So the thing is, you got to remember that um, even when you enable Pro, full Pro, like if you switch out of S mode, you don't actually get full compatibility. It takes a couple of different forms. Um, you don't get those features that are just missing on ARM, Hyper-V, and so forth. You don't get 64-bit uh, app support. This is true both in the store and on the desktop. And so uh, I think you noticed this while we were doing the show, but yeah. you can download Google Chrome. It actually is smart enough somehow to get the 32-bit version. It works fine. Um, Adobe Photoshop Elements uh, 15, uh, 15, I think, is the version I have. I bought it through the store a year and a half ago. I install it on all my PCs. Well, no, it's not available on this computer. It's a 64-bit app. So even though it's a store app, it's not going to work in S mode or otherwise. It's a 30, It's a 64-bit app. Um, but then there's that kind of uh, the S mode plus plus stuff. So um, you can't install things that are drivers, right? Because unless there's an ARM driver, of which there are none today out in the world. So um, a Microsoft mouse is a great example. Microsoft uh, Surface Precision Mouse. One of the weird things about S mode on any computer is that the Microsoft mouse and keyboard software will not install uh, in S mode. It's a desktop application. So I thought, well, this is kind of interesting. Like I... This thing will run desktop applications. That application is available in a 32-bit version. It's just an application, right? I'm not trying to install a driver. The mouse works. Maybe the application will still be able to control the mouse and let me configure the buttons. And the answer to that question is no, it doesn't work. Yeah, so yeah. it's goofy because it actually installs. But then I've had run. a lot of situations <laughs> like that. I did too. That's just the big one. You know, that, I think that's a good example because I've talked about the mouse thing in the past. But yeah, same thing. So app compatibility is kind of mixed. Um, I went from there to performance. And, you know, like anyone using this, you don't have to look too hard. I mean, the, it, the performance is slow. But the thing that I noticed and, and the realization I came to was I'm, kind, I'm using this wrong. And I did it on purpose. But if you stick to store apps, yep. and, and including, by the way, the Office applications, yep. the performance is surprisingly fine. Yep. So um, that's my a little example weird. Is, it's as if Microsoft it's, tweaked its stuff. Yeah, which I'm absolutely okay with. Um, yeah, so, that's mostly what people are using, right? Yeah, and so this is and this is what I mean by it being sideways to S. So imagine you buy one of these computers, and you turn S mode off, um, and you install the the one or two little you know, desktop apps that you really need to get your, your life together or whatever. If you can stick mostly to um, store apps and just to use yep. those other apps sometimes, what you're going to get is more of a S mode type experience, meaning that this thing is still streamlined, still performs better, still gets better battery life, and, and still shouldn't exhibit that same kind of bit rot because it is an ARM-based system and you're really not going to do... It's almost like... Um, you're getting zapped every time you use a desktop app. It's going to make you want to do that less. Right. Whereas on like an Intel system, there's no penalty for it. So even though the performance might be degrading over time, even though the battery life might be degrading over time on Intel, you don't really care or think about it because this is what you want to do. But by virtue of the fact, like it's it, it by giving you the power to do it and by making it kind of stink, it, it almost is helping you get over the need to do it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I decided that the, and I, you know, like I, I went into that kind of artificial thing on purpose, but I'm going to stick with the apps that make sense on this system and see how it does over time. I've been kind of watching, um, the standby stuff. I, I installed two builds of the windows 10 insider preview on this thing and did a bunch of other stuff in between them. And I never charged the device. <laughs> like I would, I would never attempt it's amazing, to do that. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going away this week. So I'll, I have a data sim and I'm going to, I'm going to write up a, that stuff. I tested the pen. That is actually pretty laggy, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, even, I had the same even exact, experiences. Yeah, yeah. And I whipped up, I brought up my Apple pencil, um, uh, because last year I tested it against the new surface pen. I found those to be very comparable. I had to charge the thing, which is beautiful because you get to stick it up the butt of the iPad to charge it. Um, <laughs> but, um, that thing is so fluid and so yeah. lag free yeah. and so natural feeling it's, I hate to say this, but I mean, it, it is kind of magical. Like it's, it's amazing. And then you go to the uh, HP thing and you know, as you're moving the pen across the screen, the, the ink that you're drawing is trailing it by, you know, like whatever that is like a 16th of an inch or something, but it's noticeably laggy. And I think for writing, like for taking notes and so forth, it's probably okay. Um, when I just write with it, it's fine. Other than the fact I can't read anything I write, but when I try to draw with it, it's it's just not precise enough. It doesn't uh, precise isn't the right word. It doesn't keep up well enough to, for drawing or painting to make sense, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. that's too bad because it's kind of a cool. It's a tablet. It's, you know, it's, it's a like nice a screen. I mean, it's it, yeah. if it if it yeah. were a yeah. Boy, I can't believe how closely your experience mirrors mine. Mm. Yeah, uh, I agree one hundred percent. Did you? Somebody's asking if you ever were able to run past Mark or any other benchmarks. I could not. Because it needs a signed uh, I, driver and it doesn't have one. Yeah, I have not tried yeah. to do benchmarks. I, I don't think those are fair. You know, the, the the, the benefit of the well. own platform is the big and the little cores. Right. And the reason you get the standby is that when it's when you close the lid or put it to sleep or whatever, it's using the small cores. Right. And so it's it, it's sipping very very little energy, and um, it, the, for this reason, unless Intel changes the architecture of their chips. They're never going to be able to duplicate this. I mean, they might get the battery life. Like, it, I'm sure there will be Intel devices that, and I have Intel devices that get, you know, 15 hours of battery life or whatever. But um, they're never going to be able to duplicate the standby time because it's not possible to put that thing into a sleep that 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 is that deep. Mm-hmm. It just isn't possible. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I I think a benchmark would misrepresent it. You, I can yeah, guarantee you for- it's going to be slow. It's going to have very low numbers. Uh, but yeah, it, so but real it's world, u- real world is more usable than one would think. I, I equate it to what my experience of, has been on a Core M type system, a Y series chip. It's it's got that vibe to it, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's kind of a creeping thing to the performance too. I don't know if you noticed this, but you know, the first time you load like Microsoft Word, for example, um, it comes up a little, you know, slowly. The thing draws, you know, the little about box comes up and everything. And then, um, and then it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like then it's fine. Yeah, no, I'm totally. And, uh, it's like I'm totally used to it. I know. Well, okay, it's gonna take a second, yeah. and you just get used to it, and it's usable. And from then on, you launch it. It's usually fast. There's some caching going on, obviously. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, now you have an eight gig version. I only have the four gig yeah. version. So you yeah, probably yeah. have less lagginess than I do. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I yeah, don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, I run it. I run several programs simultaneously. It seems fine. I was. I've, a, I, mean, I spent I've used two hours heavily. at a coffee shop. Uh, yeah. Yesterday with Lisa programming, uh, I was on the on the SIM chip, oh. and it was great. I don't I was have very I, I don't have this here. Maybe you could show this to Mary Jo. But um, the device is not lappable in any sense. No, right. Well, and part of the reason you is can that kind of do. Stand, you can put it. Okay, if you cross yeah, your but, legs, <laughs> you can no, put no, the stand <laughs> on the leg. <laughs> and well, no, but no. even that. So if, look at where the 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 triangle is that's formed by the kickstand. The the point of the triangle, the silver tip there. Yeah. yeah, that thing is not attached to that machine. No, it it's comes off all the time. Attached. That thing oh. comes off very easily. Yeah. Um. The other goofy thing about it, I don't know if you can show this easily, but if you close it, I'll just close the whole thing. Yeah. Um, the way that you, if you're used to a Surface Pro or any device like a Surface Pro, you're very used to kicking out the kickstand from the bottom. Oh yeah, I rip this, this off one, all the time. It's, it comes it's, from the top. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. And oh. you no, know, granted, I think if you just use one you'd computer, you get used to it. Yeah. But the, the problem is when you when you open it from the top that way, you I I, I, I do it because I'm you know huge and really strong. I um I separate it from the laptop every all time. the time. Every time. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> you have to kind of, you have to, it takes yeah, a little training. Gentle. Well, you just have to learn it. It's a twist of the wrist. It's not yeah. a pull. Yeah. It's a twist it's, of the wrist. It, it's, um, you get used I, to it. I, I, and I don't mind it. I mean, I have to say it's no. got infinite, you know, like the new surface you have, you yeah. can have, you can go pretty shallow. Well, not, but you, okay. But you know what? Okay. Here's what you lose though. What, um, what with the lose? Surface Pro, you can lean that thing back really far. Yeah, uh, I think they call it studio mode, and then you can draw on it using a slight angle to the screen. Yeah, uh, with this device, you can't really do that. Why not? Because if you start drawing on it, the thing's going to slap down to the table. <laughs> Is it really? Okay, you got to yeah. draw less hard, Paul. <laughs> I like I said, humongous. But um, <laughs> okay, it's just no. You're right. It's kind of this at a shallow angle. This yeah. pushes down really easily. You're yeah. exactly mm. right. You can't yeah. you can't write on it. No, yeah. you need it to be. It's a, okay. A I mean, don't get me right. I'm I'm not. Maybe this is nitpicking or whatever. But it, it, I actually like this design. I think it's pretty elegant. I like the typing experience. Mm. Um, it's a little. You know, when it's at when it's at that angle, you you know, you get that thing where you're kind of hitting it, and the whole the board thing is bouncing. Boing, 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 but, boing. Yeah, that's all right. But it's you know what? It's okay. I type hard, and I I'm able to type on it like that. It rattles a little bit. It's fine. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. In other words, it's one of those computers where you go, it's okay. It's yeah. like, yeah, you know, I can live with it. It's not one of so those the things where you go, though, you is, got to get this. It's the greatest thing. Yeah. I can yeah. live with it. P people are going to hear this and say, great, it's okay. But it doesn't cost $400. It costs $1,000. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and actually, the version I have got probably costs $1,300. Right. I don't even know how much that one is. I have the base. Yeah. So yeah. how do you, you justify can get a, that? You can get a nice laptop for less. Why wouldn't you? Well, I because I think 20 hours battery life. This yeah. is the what, SIM you card. Get her, right. Some laptops where, have SIM, don't they? Yes. <laughs> but where they're positioning <laughs> this is against the iPad Pro. And, yeah. I, and I think the idea here is that we've accepted the fact that for some people, you're going to be out in the world using your phone most of the time. But every mm -hmm. once in a while, you need to crack the thing open and use a real keyboard, work on a document or a spreadsheet or whatever it is. And the advantage of this thing over um, an iPad Pro, aside from double the battery life or whatever, is that it runs real office. And actually that experience yeah. is pretty damn good. So, you know, if you want full Excel, which is much better than the mobile Excel version, mm -hmm. or full uh, Word, which frankly for me, I don't think is all that better, but is better. Mm -hmm. Full PowerPoint, full Outlook, whatever it might be, those things are available on this. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not 100% saying it makes sense. I'm just, but this is the positioning. And I, does it satisfy that need yeah, I do. You know, does it justify a thousand dollars? Here's know. what uh, here's what we always said about the iPad, and I think it's very much true of this. It's not your only laptop. Mm -hmm. If this were your only laptop, I'd have to recommend against it. Mm -hmm. But it's so it's for somebody well, who has some money and is willing to spend mm -hmm. some money on technology, who has maybe as I do a Yoga or something, an X One mm -hmm. Carbon. That's the big heavy duty main machine, and it's you know pretty portable. But when they so, need something like a folio, like for an airplane, they want to watch movies. It there's a use for it. I don't. I'm. I'll tell you. I'm. I'm probably not bringing this to Japan. I've been trying to think. Is this enough? Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. not. So or, here's something. I, I'm not going to do this per se. But um, when when I go, I'm going to Denver for four days, basically, right? So what, here, one of the th I'm trying to understand if this is like a big deal. My Fitbit gets almost a week of battery life, so I know that I don't have to bring a charger for the Fitbit. Oh I don't God, have to worry it's about that. Go charger it's free. So, no well, charger. first of all, I'm not only bringing this computer because I need to get work done too, and I can't, you know, I, I I'm me, you know, whatever. So I'm going to bring a ThinkPad as well. Hmm. I'm not going to bring the charger for the HP. That's a little cheap to say because the Lenovo charger is going to work. But what I am going to do is not charge the thing. All right. So I have the hmm. fall the fallback. I'm going to play it safe and, and not bring the charger. But would it be a game changer of some kind if I could travel to Colorado, uh, do a little bit of work on fr uh, Thursday and Friday, probably a little bit of work on Saturday morning, and then fly home Sunday, yeah, which is what I'm doing, and never have to charge a thing? Is that like a game changer or is it not a big deal just to throw a charger in a bag? I don't know. It's a big deal so gonna, if, if you are just carrying it in a purse or a, a very small bag, right? Okay. Right, I'm bringing a giant manly backpack, but yes, if it, it you could carry this thing like a little, um, what do you call it, like a little portfolio, overnight or whatever. bag, overnight, overnight bag, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, um, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't even notice. It probably weighs yeah. I don't know, a pound point seven something like that. It, it's you know, it's light. Yeah, yeah. I think we agree a hundred percent. I do think, think so. it's an important caveat that it probably shouldn't be your only machine. 
Uh, but if you have the luxury of having a second, just, just I mean, I always wonder when I see people using their iPad as their primary. I think well, that's obviously, crazy. I don't. But get some it. people are able to do that. Um, those people have emotional problems. But <laughs> I, I, mean, I, no, I, I, I feel like it's it's you're you're putting up with some pain that you don't need to put yeah. up with, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and, okay, but they they must feel that the benefit of having to carry this thing that they don't have to worry about charging, that's so light. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you know, and, and, but again, I it's think there's there's thing. this use case. You only need the keyboard sometimes. Right. Um, when you do, you really need it, right? For whatever reason, you someone sent you a document, you have to edit it, whatever it might be. But that is only like once, a, you know, once a week or something. Yeah. Um, I, 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 this is not my life, right? So I'm trying to put yeah. myself in the position of someone who is lucky enough to be like that. Um, well, you know, it's it, it. The person who you're describing who is like that is an executive, right? Like somebody who doesn't yeah. actually make the PowerPoint, but who has to like just mm -hmm. go, okay, check. It's Bring it up and look yeah. at it and say no yeah. to this. And well, yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. Or, you know, I think a salesperson who gives yeah. presentations, this yep. would be great. Yep. It's always yeah. connected. You don't have to worry if you're going to have connectivity or join the get. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of embarrassing. You're going to make a presentation. Mm -hmm. You say, "What's your Wi-Fi?" That's yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> so you don't have to worry yep. about that. You've yep. got the pen. You can annotate. You yeah. can have a PowerPoint. You can annotate. I think this is a great sales tool. For instance, mm -hmm. so there are mm -hmm. use cases that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, look, it, uh, the emulation stuff can only get better. There's going to be an 845 uh, happening in these systems sometime this mm -hmm. year. Are we going to see 64 bit on these? Bizarre. Yeah, I, I, there's some question as to the timing and what that means exactly. So uh, they have said this, I believe. Didn't we have this conversation? Yeah, they said uh, um, ARM 64, yes, but they're they're not going to support 64-bit Intel apps. Oh, it. there you go. All right, so that's a, yep. I, that's kind of a what does that problem. mean? ARM 64. Yeah, well, it's a 64-bit OS. So yep. if you um, uh, were to write an ARM 64 app, which are I people putting ARM 64 them. apps on here? No. Well, you wouldn't know you were doing it, right? So um, when you get a, a store app, it, oh, it could be, be like a bundle. Like I mean, a, these are just check boxes. If you're right. if you're a developer and you're, you've already you know compiled this thing for the store for Intel, you can just check boxes and get it on ARM. That's easy. Um, but the the trick is going to be the the desktop apps. And what this sounds like to me is that Photoshop is never going to work on this thing. So. Yeah. 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 And the reason no, you can't do 64-bit um, Intel on it is because it's using the Windows on Windows subsystem to mm -hmm. um, do the emulation, right? And so that lets you do 32-bit apps on 64-bit oh. processors. So you answer my question. It's not going to have Intel 64. Mm -mm. Okay. That's what it sounds nope. like. Yeah. That doesn't. You know, that's that's another kind of a lot of programs I can't run that I would like to run. So, yeah, yeah this and is it's weird, um, uh, you know, to the average user, I, I, I put it on Twitter, you know, we, a week ago probably, some kind of a screenshot of this thing saying no to a 64-bit app, and someone's like, well, what kind of a user needs to know about blah, 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 whatever, this is something no one has to think about. I'm like, do you have any idea what I just put a picture of? You know, a normal person goes to the web and tries to run an app, and it That's says, this point. is what it says. That's what they see. This is my, this is my point. It, it's, yeah. This you're putting this in front yeah. of a normal person. They don't know what that means, and yeah. they don't know how to fix it. They can't, by the way, in most cases. Um, yeah, unless there's a 32-bit version, a bad, you're out of luck. Yeah, right. But you're making them think about something technical. Right. Go back to the yeah. website and see if there's a 32-bit version. What is well, that? Well, that mean? was ultimately the problem with RT. Was yeah. it looked like it was Windows, but it didn't yeah. run Windows at all your Windows apps or anything. Yeah, I mean really. this, this this pushes that much was the problem further, but it's still, ultimately yeah you're going to hit some of those weird little roadblocks and uh, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> you know, yeah, so. that's not good. Yeah. Hey, have you heard any? In fact, what I would probably say is for most people, you'd get a Surface instead, a Surface Pro instead. And uh, spend the money. The fact that spend the money if you want even, this. How about don't even spend the money? You know, spend. Nine ninety nine to twelve ninety nine, the same price, yeah. and you'll get a much better Surface yeah. Pro. What you, you won't know, get is Type C money. charging, but you know you, <laughs> that, you can live with that, right? But uh, yes. I think you, I think really that's the real question: Should I get this or a Surface Pro? And I'd spend a little more mm -hmm. get a Surface Pro, mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah, I, I, it is more because if you want the LTE, that's expensive. They, they oh, that's fair. They oh, ding oh, okay. You. They ding way, you yep, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. and you you're don't right. get the battery life either. So. Hmm. No, I don't remember what the Surface Pro came up, but you know, Surface Laptop was in the 13-hour range. Surface Book Two was 15-ish. I mean, it, Surface Pro is probably pretty good. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're not going to get the standby, and yeah. you're not. Yeah. The yeah. battery life. You know, the funny thing is, this did kind of open my eyes 
to Surface Pro. Like, oh, yeah. maybe I could, maybe that wouldn't be such a bad form factor. Mm. You know, I was kind of, I'm really skeptical of the tablet with a floppy keyboard. So what's, what would sell Surface Pro is the Thunderbolt port. Gosh darn it, that yes. That doesn't exist. Yep. You know, then, then you could <laughs> do the single wire dock. Yep, please. I to beg whatever. of you. And, and I then, beg of you, Microsoft. Yeah. I beg of you. Hey, have you heard any uh, good Surface uh, Harbor rumors lately? <laughs> any chance? What's, by what's the, the word in the street? What's the word? What's the word? The word is dongle. That's a good word. One of my dongle. favorites. <laughs> Sounds like um, a, something we would have called someone in gym in high school. You're a exactly. Dongle. You're a dongle. <laughs> yeah. So this was supposed to show up last year, wasn't it? Microsoft said they were going to provide a USB-C dongle for surfaces um, for people who were like, I can't live without the USB-C port. Oh. Uh, okay, but <laughs> those people don't exist, by the way, but... I think that's why we haven't seen it. So it it hasn't shown up. Um, the walking cat posted a picture of, I think, what must be the old design for I this. Say, I don't know if it, 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 do we have a way to show what this looks like because it's it, it connects to the surface connector. And it looks then like a, a giant brick. box. <laughs> it looks like a power <laughs> brick, and it's port. got a tiny little one USB C <laughs> port at the end of it. And it's like, what is it? What's inside of that? A computer? That can't be what it looks like, right? I mean, is there a Raspberry Pi powering this thing? Like, what? I know, I know. But um, I think it was Tom Warren who went to Microsoft and said, "So, are you guys ever going to ship this?" And they said, "Yeah, we are this year, sometime this year." But they didn't so, say that device, right? <laughs> They just oh, said yeah, we will I ship I, I, look, a dongle. Th this that thing doesn't solve a very big problem. No, um, it doesn't. Anyone can plug in a, a little hub off of the USB port that's also on the surface. Yeah. And get a USB C port that way. USB C is just another port for the same stuff that is wrong with mm -hmm. Surface. What Surface needs, and that's the point of this bring the Thunderbolt thing, is they need to bring Thunderbolt three to to all of their products. That Surface yeah. does. And uh, I think it should replace Surface Connect. Because it is the one port that does it all. Power, mm -hmm. data, pass-through, display, mm -hmm. uh, external GPU. So this is what you the walking cat... Uh, yeah, right. that's like, look how huge that is. That can't be it. That <laughs> cannot be, be right. it. That's crazy. The I mean, I think I've, that might have been the old look. You know what? I, I bet that is a power brick. That connects to the oh, Surface Connect. Oh, that's what it so is. I, I think you're supposed to put surface a USB-C cable. And you yeah, this up, is supposed to go up to a, like a, a, pl a wall plug. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. USB-C based. That's I bet that's why. a power it's a brick. brick. That, that's power why brick. it's. Yeah. I bet it's a power brick. Yeah. yeah. Now what we don't see is what's on the other side because, uh, you know, there are companies I've seen Apple or somebody do this where they have other Type Cs on the side there, okay. third parties for the yeah. Apple. And it. Microsoft does that right now for their existing yeah, uh, yeah. Surface the, uh, power dock. supplies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, no, just uh, for the power supply, they have a USB port. Oh, they have the a port there. Okay. For yeah. device charging. Yeah. It's nice to do that. I mean, you're going to have to carry that thing around anyway, so you might as well give it some. Yeah, it's like it's a little gimme on there. It's yeah. a it's a nice touch. Ah, oh, just Type C in general. It's just so I mean, everything's Type C now. I can I know. finally yeah. rest. So they'll have to, but they'd have to come out with brand new models of all of their machines to do what you want them to do. I Paul, will make right? you a so, deal. I will make you a deal, Microsoft. Do it, and I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, you'll buy but, it right on way, the show. I mean, right here, right <laughs> now. Better. Obviously, any one of these things could have small changes, but but consider yeah. all of their devices right now: laptop, Pro, Surface Book Two, Surface Studio, and Surface Hub doesn't really factor into this too much. But those those mo mostly portable devices, and then the um, and the Studio. Just get rid of the Surface Connect. Yeah, please. And replace it with Thunderbolt Three. At least one of them. Is there anything it does that and they that you don't have to change the rest of the machine? Just do that. Is there anything that connects? thing dongle does that the thunderbolt can't do no, no. just be slower <laughs> that's all it can do it can be slower I, no, it, it's yeah. Just, it's, yeah if you do a full thunderbolt is, port it's got it's, it's a usb 40 port with a 40 gigabits shape per and a, second. a magnetic connector that's all it is yeah <laughs> it's got video it's got audio it's got everything it's got yeah. data i don't think people understand how transformative it can be Imagine you had a Surface Pro with this Thunderbolt 3. Just the exact machine we have today. Well, it would probably be quad-core now, too. But the exact machine, but with Thunderbolt 3 on the side. Nice. You could plug a GPU into it, and it would be a gaming machine. Sweet. You can't do that over USB. No. Right. You have to have Thunderbolt 3. You could drive two external 4K displays at 60 hertz. And 
whatever other peripherals and that GPU. <laughs> I mean, like you could yeah. do all this stuff. It's, I bet I bet the reason they didn't do it before now or haven't done it yet is because they're trying to get rid of inventory of parts right. or PCs, right? Like yeah. they're trying to get okay. rid of what, of what they have is my guess. That could be part of it. But I first asked Microsoft, I, I, I looked this up. It was late 2015. I said, seriously, Surface, USB-C. 2016, I said, seriously, Surface, Thunderbolt 3 <laughs> and USB-C. The, since then, they've released a new Surface Pro, and a Surface Laptop, and a new Surface Book 2, and two form factors. Oh, and Surface Studio. Right. None of which have Thunderbolt 3, and only one of which has a USB-C port. Mm -hmm. Guys, <laughs> seriously. I think what this really points to is the fact that Microsoft, for uh, as big of a company as it is, and as famous as Microsoft is, is they're basically a boutique PC maker. You know, yeah. They're not a yeah. Dell or a Lenovo or an HP. No. They're like this tiny little company. They only have... Mm -hmm. They only control like 2.5% uh, of the market for Windows 10 devices in use. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's tiny. Right. And I, I just think they don't have the, I don't want to say the expertise, that's unfair, but they just the don't leverage, have the volume. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just don't have a way to, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, people always come with these excuses, you know, like, oh, you know, the USB charges can fry p PCs and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, but all the real PC makers already built circuits into their computers mm -hmm. to prevent this. You know, yeah. this problem's been solved. I don't know. Yeah. I, they really need to do this. It's it's so overdue. And, you know, the, so the question keeps coming up, especially when this dongle thing came up again this, this mm -hmm. week, is when are they going to refresh the, the various lines, right? And so right. we don't really know, right? I mean, I haven't they, heard anything. No, I mean, everybody's like, well, they just refreshed the Surface Pro, right, last fall. So it's probably not going to be before fall for that line oh, yeah. i wouldn't it's, think right 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 and Although, surface like laptop said, I mean, laptop came yeah. out in may last year or around there yeah. um so maybe they're gonna refresh that first i would literally we just don't accept know. one port if it was that port <laughs> i wouldn't <laughs> care it'd be better if two i honestly these things are so small in yeah. your existing space you could do two if you think about how Surface Laptop, Surface Pro, and Surface Book 1 and 2 have mm -hmm. both a USB port of some kind and a video port of some kind, typically mini display mm -hmm. port. Oh, and a Surface Connect port for expansion and power. You could make the argument that all of those machines could have three USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports. But you know what? I would take one because <laughs> it does <laughs> everything. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't know why things take yeah, so we, long. I don't get it. Yeah. So we don't know. Like everybody was like, oh, so it must be really soon that they're going to do the refresh on these lines. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, they could do a spring refresh and then a fall. They've been kind of falling into that pattern uh, um, lately. The other issue is that and this is particularly problematic for Surface Laptop and Surface Pro, uh, but also is the case with Surface Studio, is that these things are still on dual core Intel chips. Actually, sorry, the Surface Studio might be a quad core chip. I might be wrong about that one, but it feels Surface pretty slow. Two, whatever it is, it's yeah, whatever it is, it's kind of laptop class. Uh, but the Surface Book Two, I believe, has the newer gen, the eighth gen quad core, so it benefits from that improvement. Plus, it has DGPUs inside, which is great. But you know, you get an automatic performance boost by just going eighth gen. I mean, eighth gen plus Thunderbolt three. I'm, what I'm saying is, just do that. Forget the rest of. Don't do new style. Don't change the body. Don't change anything else. Mm. Just do those mm -hmm. two things, and you've got a that you got a good year uh, of life yeah. out of those things before you have to think about it again. Yeah, the thing the thing that we we know is likely to show up this year in the Surface line is Surface Hub, the new Surface Hub. But beyond that, yeah. you know, which but that's a models get refreshed? Product that I don't know how I don't yeah. even know how that equates to a PC internally. But I know same. Same. And then Andromeda, right, which is the dual screen foldable You know that thing. thing's going to come out with like a micro SD or a micro <laughs> USB port, you know, just to screw with us <laughs> instead of USB-C. It's like, yeah, we got a really good deal in these things. Oh, that would be so horrible. No, they're That'd not going to so, do that. So, no, I know, but know. that would be so Microsoft. <laughs> so Microsoft. Uh, they've mm. updated Edge for uh, iOS and Android. Uh, a lot of people talking yeah. about it. Got some buzz. Yeah. Yeah, so it, I like it, it, um, actually. Edge was already on um, iOS on phones and Android phones um, as of a, a couple months ago, I believe. But this week they said now you can get 
Edge for for iPads and Android tablets. And it's free and you can get it from the store. I think I think it's good to remember why Microsoft's doing this, right? <laughs> like the <laughs> One reason is for people who use Windows PCs who want to have their bookmarks and other things sync across other devices that they might have. But it's also because Microsoft's trying to figure out how to stay mo- how to stay relevant as a player in mobile, right? And they have this whole continue on PC idea where if you've got something you know work you're working on, you want to be able to continue with it on a another device. That the way they're kind of tying you into that and trying to make you do that is through Edge. So I don't know how many people use Edge on iOS or Android. I have Edge installed on Android, and I have to admit, I I almost never use it. Um, hmm. But it's there. Hmm. I see. <laughs> yeah. You can make it Do your you, default browser, can't you? You can. Yeah. You can. Yep. Um, but why? <laughs> I tried to install it on Chrome, um, Buck, just to you know, kind of screw with the universe a little bit, but it's not compatible yet. Um, that probably will happen. Oh, right. I, honestly, right. the full screen experience on an iPad, which is how I'm using it, uh, mm-hmm. is great. I mean, it's is it's it? good. Yeah. You know, obviously, it uses the underlying browser engine. It will one day support eBooks, which is kind of you know, if for whatever reason you're buying eBooks from Microsoft, that's where you're going to want to read them, not on your computer. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, of course, the bigger issue with Edge is that. Um, it's Microsoft Edge, and I, you know, every 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 version of Windows 10, they rev this thing, and every version of Windows 10, I kind of look at it again, and um, mm-hmm. I, I just did it. I'm actually using Edge as my default browser right now. It's a little bit like punching yourself in the face because it's um, actually because I think there's no I can't follow because, but it's a little bit <laughs> like punching yourself in the face. Period. Period. Full um, stop. You know, it's weird because honestly, I, I, Mary Jo, I think, had said last week, probably or two weeks ago, that Microsoft Edge is in the in a place where most normal people could use it, and that a lot of normal people wouldn't even notice they were using Microsoft Edge mm. if they just got Windows 10. And I am here to say that I completely agree with that. I, that is absolutely Ooh, true. We, what, um, what? The problem it has improved. <laughs> to, no, it really has. It, it, it has improved to that point. It's they've added yeah. a bunch of neat stuff to it. It's it's much better than it was. But for me. Personally, I keep running into these things, and it, it's very similar to the situation with Windows 10s, where you know you kind of want to do the right thing as we're going to think of it, but mm-hmm. you, you keep hitting like a little bit of a wall, and and, and you when you hit the, enough of them, you're like I can't do this anymore, you know, and yeah. it just becomes a problem. So I, I I've been taking notes, and I just want to, if you don't mind, I'd like to uh, just li- just kind of list out the things I've noticed over the past couple of days, right? So for example, this, some of these are not are not a big deal, but some of them are bigger deals. You know, um, my, a Chrome, for example, lets you mute websites, which I love. Um, Edge lets you mute tabs, which is fine, but then you go back to the site, it's the videos, you know, again. You know, so it's just a little thing, you know, whatever. Um, I, I mentioned this one to Mary Jo the other day. When you click on a link that is a Twitter link, and it loads twitter.com slash some username slash whatever it is, that almost never works for me in Edge for some reason. It, it actually says something like Twitter is busy. And then I load it in Chrome and it works fine. And I have no idea why. That is really weird. Um, (laughs) But the the big ones are the things that I do for work on a daily basis. So, for example, I will often um, embed a video at the top of an article. Like when I post this show tomorrow, I will embed a video, um, you know, at the top of the article. That's about this uh, episode. And when I go to get that embed code from YouTube, the 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 pop-up window that occurs is shifted off to the edge of the screen and the embed code is half off the screen and I can still go over it and kind of, you know, select it sort of, but there's a copy button that I don't see because it's off the edge of the screen and that would be easier. Mm. It's just kind of weird. But the bigger, bigger issues involve WordPress, which is how I post things to the web. And I have a lot of problems there. There's weird stuff. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you could imagine a body of text and you, you got an image and you're going to drag it into the editor and you want it to appear between two paragraphs, I would say eight times out of 10, when the drag is complete and the image appears, Edge starts adding blank lines under the picture. And until I click somewhere in the editor, it won't stop. <laughs> That's a bug. And then I have to go into text terrible. mode and remove all the little yeah. extra spaces. That's really bad. Mm. If I add an image to the top of an article, it puts, uh, you know, the ampersand, MBSP, whatever it is, for a sp- like for a space or like a new non, line or whatever. Non-breaking space, yeah. Mm. Non-breaking space, thank you. Um it adds one of those. I don't know why. <laughs> it adds, so it's um, like extra whites of it. Do you, um, do you have a customized version of WordPress or do you use just a oh, generic I, one? So I don't know. I mean, I think because every version of WordPress is probably customized. 
Yeah, because, you know, like our CMS at ZDNet, it doesn't work mm -hmm. with every browser. Like it doesn't work. Oh. It it okay. never used to work right with Internet Explorer. <laughs> All right, but I, you know, but if I can't use this for work, then yeah. I mean, yeah. in some That's ways, a deal the, the reason yeah. in whatever ways doesn't matter. The other thing is, you guys can test. By the way, that's all right market share. That just means that they test with Chrome because it's got dominant market share. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then go down the list: Firefox, Safari. So here, here's Internet what I just Explorer, saw today. Edge. Mm -hmm. Just what I, you guys could test this right now to see if this happens to you in Microsoft Edge. If you um, do a web search for Xbox Wire. Xbox Wire is um, Microsoft's blog for the Xbox, right? And um, they will often put embed a video in their articles about whatever it is. And so I wanted to read an article today about Resident Evil 7 Biohazard being enhanced for Xbox One X because this is a game I like and I might actually want to play through it again in 4K or whatever it is. And there's a video. And when you click the, pl the play button on the YouTube video, the area where the video is goes white and no video plays. It just whites out the space. Mm -hmm. Um, I tried it in Chrome and obviously it works. I tried it in a in private tab because I don't know, maybe it's a one of the few extensions I'm using. It does the same thing, you know. <laughs> and it's not the first time I've seen it, but that's the one I took a note of. Um, and it's like, you know, I, again, I don't know. I, some of these are deal breakers, I guess. Some of them are just like, eh, you know, whatever. But this is just like a couple of days of this is this is yeah. where it breaks for me, you know. And, so I just uh, I just tried your experiment on Edge on Android and it also does not work. <laughs> yeah, there you go. By the way, Microsoft browser, <laughs> Microsoft website, and it, this doesn't work. Yeah, they should test it with Edge. <laughs> no, I'm just look. I, I, you know, people think I'm like picky. Like, <laughs> really I don't should what test your problem that is like, yeah. why are you dumping yeah. on Edge all the time? And it's like, no, I'm. I am literally trying to use this thing every single day. I don't even and get the spinning the, anymore. It's just sitting there. It's just white. Yep, okay, same. So you're seeing what I saw. This yep. is my point. Yep. Let me just. And I, I just. That's crazy. At some point, you just kind of give up, and then I'll hear from people right. like, "Oh, you always dump it on edge. You're such a jerk." And it's like I, I <laughs> but I'm trying. No, those I are mean, those are legitimate. Those are legitimate complaints for sure. Yeah. All right. That's all. That, you know. So I listen. I, but to back to my main point, which was uh, your contention that this thing is good enough for most. I, you know what? Yeah. I. I uh, when I go back and I look at the complaints that I was making about Edge in the last version of Windows 10 or two it's versions like, ago, whatever it is. This might be an Xbox Wire problem because this is Chrome. I know. <laughs> I wonder. Oh, I, got, oh, oh, see, I actually Chrome? got this to load in Chrome. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> this that's might be okay. an Xbox Wire problem. Not yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, good yeah, to know. Yeah, 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 good to know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just to be fair. Let's be fair. Yep. Yep, yep. Well, I am trying to be fair, but, I, you know, I, I'm i trying. No, you know, so... Somebody asked me on Twitter the other day, mm -hmm. and this, I, I have a, I, it, it's, you know, when people get your inconsistency and they point it out on Twitter and you, you want to have a retort, but you're like, I, no, I don't have one. Because um, he, yeah. Yeah. this person said, um, you always talk about edge being okay for normals, but like most, don't most people who are normal use Chrome on Windows machines because it has like the runaway market share. So how do they get it if, if it, it if they're normal? It depends what you mean by normal. It does. But like I was thinking, so my retort was, and I didn't send this because I thought it was weak, but I'm like, okay, on yeah. my mom's PC, she has Chrome. Who put it on there? One of us did, one of the kids, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mom does. I'm like, I, yeah, yeah mom does. point. That, yeah. Mary, well, actually, so this is a conversation we had kind of privately, uh, you know, a week or so ago, whatever. I don't, I don't know if it was with regards to this topic or not, but I said something to the effect of, you know, familiarity is underrated. And, yeah. and what I meant by that was that, you know, you get used to doing things a certain way and it's kind of hard to switch. And like, why bother? I mean, why go through the pain when what you're doing is fine? And so I think what happened was Internet Explorer was so bad for so long that something really changed for Windows users mm -hmm. where we went against the normal grain of just using, and I mean this broadly, not everyone, but, yeah. the, you know, the mainstream users, against, against just working with what was there and actively seeking something else out and using that instead. And so mm -hmm. it creates a problem for Edge because, a, a, they use the same stupid E logo, basically, as IE. And no one looks at that and has a good feeling about it. They're like, ugh, like, why would I want that thing? And mm -hmm. they actively avoid it. You know, it, they should have not gone with that name or that logo, for one thing. Not yeah. that that solves their problems, but I think that's one issue. And, you know, frankly, once you get on to something that works for you, and Edge, I mean, uh, Chrome works great. You're like, sorry, guys. I mean... I hear people complain about like memory usage and things that no one ever thinks about or cares about, honestly, mm -hmm. in real life. But Edge works. I mean, uh, Chrome works great. 
now you want people to switch from that again? Like I like we already switched mm. browsers, guys. We're done. You know, <laughs> I, I think there's a real familiarity yeah. thing that Microsoft is going to have a hard time overcoming. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, I'm trying. I I do. I take this pain on behalf of the team. Um, <laughs> thanks. And thanks I'm, for. And I'm thanks trying, for, I, but I I got to be honest. I don't know how long I can last. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's painful. Yeah. And it's a little, it's like a thousand little cuts, you know? Yep. Well, I got to say, if it were a choice between giving up Edge mm -hmm. and giving up WordPress. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with WordPress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sticking with yeah. WordPress. No, I know. If it's, yeah. if it's part of your workflow, you've got to yeah. do that. I mean, I'm yeah. just going to say this right now. And WordPress is a sponsor. Mm -hmm. uh, WordPress for me is a non-breaking up space. That's what I say. <laughs> ha, 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 get it? Our show today brought to you, back of the book coming up, our show today brought to you by WordPress.com. Uh, if you visited LeoLaporte.com, you know I am a WordPress fanatic. That's where I live online. Uh, Paul lives there. Steve Gibson lives there. I mean, some of the best brightest minds, and I'm not including mine. <laughs> and also me. And also Paul and me <laughs> use WordPress. And there's a good reason for it. Uh, in fact, 30% of the web is is running on WordPress. And there's a good reason for it. It's a great contact management system. And if you don't want to host it yourself, and I, I trust me, you don't, <clears throat> then there's really a great place to go. WordPress.com. Now, I used to have a host with WordPress running on it. I've actually had that since the early 2000s. But once I moved to WordPress.com, man, I realized what I was missing. First of all, it cost me less than paying for a server and putting WordPress on it. WordPress plans start at $4 a month, and they keep it up to date. I don't ever have to worry. WordPress.com, always secure, always up to date. You get hundreds of temp templates to choose from, all the plugins. It's just an awesome place to hang your hat. You need to have an online presence that you own. Your Facebook page is not it. I think we've learned that, haven't we? Uh, your Twitter feed is not it. You need to have a place that your Facebook links and your Twitter links point back to, the place where you live, your therot.com, and that's WordPress. WordPress makes it easy to set up. You don't have to be a geek, no coding, no design necessary. Just pick a template, put some content in, you're good to go. Share your voice, your work, your way, your site. It's all yours when you build it on WordPress.com. If at any point you need some help, their customer support team's there 24-7, Monday through Friday, and weekends too. They've got great e-commerce, everything from a buy button to a full e online store. They c You can do it all, and it's so easy to set up. When you're ready to expand your business's online reach, WordPress has the tools you need to get your you know presence out there. Built-in SEO. Social sharing is great because when customers or, or, or readers or clients visit your website, uh, they can share it on their Facebook, their Twitter. They can spread the word about you. It really leverages it. And by the way, WordPress.com is a community on its own. You can have the WordPress follow button. And there's millions of people there who are part of that community who also will find your site. You might even get featured on the front page there at WordPress.com. And that really drives traffic. By the way, never worry about traffic. WordPress handles it no matter what you throw at it. They're just awesome. No wonder 30% of all websites run on WordPress. You can get started right now, 15% off when you go to WordPress.com slash Windows to create your website. 15% off any new website, WordPress.com slash Windows. Or new plan purchase, 15% off. That's a good deal. Find out why 30% of the web runs on WordPress. WordPress.com slash Windows. Time for the back of the book, as we call it. Let's kick things off with Paul Therott and his tip of the week. What is my tip of the week? I feel like we touched on both of my things already today. Oh, it's yeah. Okay. So Stop touching. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> it's a um, bad touch. We are now in what I call the magic window, which is that period of time where the development of one version of Windows 10 is winding down, and you can exit the Insider Preview and get on the normal development channel uh, without having to, you know, keep getting updates and go, go right into the next version. We don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, Microsoft usually provides uh, some kind of a heads up as to 
hey, we're switching everyone in the fast ring over to the next version, you know, sometime soon. Um, and the the caveat on this is that it, right now it only applies to the fast ring because the slow ring is not on the final build yet. They're on, I think, the previous build. So um, when that happens, everyone in the Insider Preview, except I guess those in RS5, will be able to get off the train. Um, for now, fast ring users can. So I use this opportunity to, um, I actually went uh, for the PCs that weren't on RS4 already, uh, sign up for the Insider Preview, signed up for fast, downloaded the build, installed it, rebooted, got out of Insider Preview. And now they're on the, what will in any day now be the shipping version. That was such uh, a when, satisfying when thing when I did that. I did that yeah. last year. It took, it took me a long time. I did it on like seven computers. It was kind of funny. <laughs> um, but I, so basically all the computers I use now are kind of are updated. Why, for, why so. did you not want to be on the uh, Insider Ring? Because I'm working on the book, and uh, the book uh, was up, being updated for the last version. So now right. I've switched the book over to RS4, and I'll be updating it for the for the new version. And that's why I got off the Insider Train again, because I need to keep them on this version so everything right. is correct. Um, the app pick, which also came up today, is Twitter for Windows 10. And this is the little asterisk. You have to be on RS4 to get this. So Twitter for Windows 10 is one of the worst apps ever made in the history of God. But <laughs> Twitter for Windows 10 RS4 is the PWA version of the Twitter app. So this is something Twitter's been developing out on the web. You can install it to your desktop in uh, on Android, uh, your home screen on Android. <clears throat> I use it, I have used it in the past uh, through Chrome, where you just pin it to the taskbar. Um, but now it's available in the store. So once you upgrade your Windows 10 computer to RS4 to version 1803, Twitter will be upgraded. You'll have to sign in again, and you'll get that PWA experience, which I happen to like a lot. Um, there is a little bit of a bug going on right now where the Microsoft Store is putting up a please review this app dialog where you can you know select the number of stars and write a little blurb and click submit, and um, it just keeps popping up. like It pops up repeatedly. And so finally, I was like, screw it, I'm going to give this thing a review and just get rid of this thing. And then it still kept coming up. So I said, screw it, I'm going to give this thing a one-star review and then say, please stop making me do this. Um, but as someone pointed out to me today, um, it's it's sort of a beta, right? So RS4 is not publicly available yet. It will be available sometime in the next few weeks. So presumably, <laughs> they will fix that by then. Um, I had a couple of guys on Twitter complain that um, this this is the thing we talked about, that this is a bad introduction to PWAs, to which I would reply, Nobody knows it's a PWA. And this mm. problem has nothing to do with PWAs. This problem has to do with the App Store or something that uh, Twitter did with regards to the App Store. Because the process that comes up is not the PWA. It's a, it's a, it actually has a Microsoft Store logo on the window before it draws. It's a Microsoft Store. Stupidity. So anyway, <laughs> here's your first PWA app for Windows 10. It's the Twitter app, which is the thing I've been using for a long time. It's excellent. So good. it's a really good app. I, I'm going to try it right. Well, I have to wait, though, till I get that new one. You right? have to get RS4. But, but if you have a machine there that's on RS4, you can, you can try it now. I don't because mm -hmm. I did what you're suggesting as your tip <clears throat> a year ago. And I'm <laughs> okay. happy go -lucky. Well, it's time to do it again. <laughs> uh, time for the Enterprise Pick of the Week with Mary Jo Foley. Yeah, I actually just kind of lucked onto this enterprise pick this week. There's a Microsoft blog. It's on blogs.msdn.microsoft.com, and it's called Carpa Datum. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seize the data. Exactly. Um, so they, uh, specifically Buck Woody, did a post about everything that Microsoft has in the AI space and what to use when. I cannot tell you how much I wish I had found this blog post maybe like two years ago <laughs> because Microsoft has a lot of different AI things. I mean, everything from like the smarts they're putting into office to like backend Azure machine learning services are all part of what they call AI. And what he did is he categorized each piece and told you what goes where and when you would use which of these tools and how you'd use them. He also did some accompanying videos um, that are also on that same blog. It's a four part series. I think it's gonna be more um, about Microsoft's overall AI strategy. I was like, finally, somebody brought some clarity to what Microsoft has in AI. So the best way to do this is go to MSDM blogs, search for Carpa Datum, and you'll come upon Woody's, uh, Buck Woody's post and all your questions will be answered in a very succinct way. Very succinct. I know. Because not man, in they, Latin. 
not in Latin, in English, and understandable with links. I'm wow. like, wow, this is so handy. Nice. Uh, so it's like a great overview. If you're if you're confused about what Microsoft has in AI and what to use when, this is your blog post. And as if that weren't enough, here's no. another enterprise pick. Um, so this one is for all of you who have questions about Azure Active Directory. You have questions, Matt Sozman has answers. <laughs> Man, he has a lot of answers. I've never seen so many links in one blog post. So go to TechNet, look for Matt Sozman's Productive Cloud blog. His last name is S-O-S-E-M-A-N. He has a post that he did today, Azure Active Directory Resources, and it's this giant compilation of everything you could ever want to know about Azure Active Directory and more. Um, all very well organized, handy links. Um, I've had a lot of people thanking me on Twitter because I tweeted this list. They're like, wow, I wish I'd found that before. Um, so everything from proof of concept to how to do password resets, how to do um, Azure IAS and Active, Azure Active Directory, um, you, you name it. The, the link is here. So go check that out, Matt Sozman's blog. And if you can't find either of these, I tweeted the links to them both this week. So just go into my Twitter and you'll see the links. Nice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're just lucky Mary Jo's here because she's been celebrating all <laughs> week long. There's a big, big beer release. Yes, there uh, is. Happened Monday. Is it an update or a release? <laughs> I know. Isn't it an addition or a version? <laughs> well, what are we talking um, about here? So... Every year, Bell's Brewing in Kalamazoo, Michigan, puts out a beer um, around this time of year. Between, I think it's between spring and the start of spring training for the baseball team uh -oh, there. That's interesting. Um, it's called Bell's Oberon, and it's a very delicious orange-colored wheat ale. Um, nice and light. It looks pretty, a lot of people make yeah. it their summer beer. Yeah. And there's, there's some controversy over whether or not to serve it with a slice of orange in no, it. No. I've had it with and without, and both are good. Oh, so man. whichever way you want to go with that, it's up to you. But give if you see Oberon on tap or in bottles, it's worth a try. I'm Bell's guessing Oberon. Paul's not an orange man. <laughs> no, I would never do that to a beer. But <clears throat> I, I've never heard of that uh, beer either. That's interesting. Yeah, Bell's Oberon. it's a good one. Yeah. Yep, it's it's a nice light way, I, wheat. <clears throat> Oberon, it Sorry. should be released midsummer, really, but that's okay. We won't. Yeah. We won't Again, yeah. master time. of time and space. Um, I know. <clears throat> I, I just tested that video again because I, I, I uh, the one I was trying to run. Well, no, I mean, it, it runs fine in Chrome for me. Like I can watch well, the video. You know what I realized? I should probably did it a disservice. I have all sorts of auto of video blockers that seem yeah. to be getting in the way of everything now. Well, I just don't want people to think I didn't do some kind of due diligence. No, no, no. That's like, probably I, Leo. I, that's I, I apologize. It didn't run for no, me. No, no, it's okay. I mean, I, I I'm, I'm like blocked. I said, I'm trying to be fair about this. Yeah. If you know, yeah. If it was a problem with the the blog or whatever, that's that's fine. But no. Yes, thank still you. Still doesn't work in Edge. Thank you for <laughs> fixing that. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, uh, sad to say the uh, the end of the show has arrived, giving Paul plenty of time to get to Logan. <laughs> yes. uh, no, I'm going to, I know. going to Philly. I know. I wish I was going to Logan. <laughs> Logan. I could leave at five. <laughs> uh, really? That far from Philadelphia? It's an hour and 15 minutes with no traffic. Oh, wow. And let wow. me tell you what is around Philadelphia, regardless of what time it is. Traffic. Traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Yep. Oh, yep. man. It's, wow. it's not good. Wow. Well, well, guys, before we sign off, can we talk about Build for one second? Oh, yes. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, are, um, the show is over uh, or not over? Yeah. Should yeah. I end the show and then talk about Build? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should do that. So let's end the show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're going to reveal all the secrets of build. Good night, everybody. <laughs> it's secret. <laughs> no, we're just going to talk about scheduling, but I, I didn't think you all needed to hear this. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do this show every uh, every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. That'd be about 1800 UTC if you want to join us in studio. We have a couple of visitors from Zurich. They, wow. Yeah. Nice to have them. I when I uh, I stepped out for a moment. I won't tell you when, but I said, please take over, because uh, <laughs> Swiss German is the most beautiful version of German. And uh, but no, they didn't. You guys kept talking, so 
Elias <laughs> and Marco didn't have to take over. I'm sorry to say. Uh, we uh, you just email tickets at twit.tv. We have very comfy chairs we can put out for you, but we do want to keep track of people coming by. So tickets at twit.tv. There's no cost. You can also watch live. We do a live stream at twit.tv slash live. And actually to clarify, because people sometimes say, oh, the stream's terrible. There are th at least three different streams there. And if you go to that page, twit.tv slash live, you'll see a drop down that you can choose from Ustream, Twitch, and YouTube. Those are our big three current live streaming sources. What's the biggest streaming source for you? Uh, it just, you know, a lot has a lot to do with what's on that front page. And, it, and sometimes mm -hmm. we'll switch it around a little bit. I don't yeah. know off the top of my head uh, who listens to which. I think Ustream probably, but more for historic reasons than any other. Uh, although, you know, we just started doing YouTube Live, you know, a few months ago. But uh, I, huh. I kind of tend to watch YouTube Live. And that solves yeah. a problem, by the way, for people who are trying to watch on their Roku. We had a Roku app. Uh, Craig Mullaney did a beautiful job of that. But uh, we decided that Roku changed their API, and it was a massive job to rewrite. And since we are on Ustream, Twitch, and YouTube, all three have Roku apps in fact, you could find one or, or all three on almost any streaming device you have. Mm. So let's say it's YouTube. Just find the Twit channel on YouTube, and, and you can watch us uh, live right there. So, yeah, they're still live on Roku, but just not through a Twit app, just through one of our uh, providers. Mm. Um, you can also listen live. That's another long story that I won't get into. But we <laughs> <laughs> Although I should mention, it's uh, at least with some of the streamers, the uh, syntax has changed. I know with Echo... At least my echo at home, I can't say listen to Twit Live on TuneIn. I'll say echo, listen to TuneIn Twit Live. And for some reason that works. So we're also working on the group issue. A number of people reported that they can listen to Twit Live on their echoes, but they can't listen to an echo group. We think we know what's going on there. And Patrick and Russell are fiddling with the, the knobs as we speak. And that should start working in the next couple of days. Uh, if you don't want to go through all this rigmarole, we do have on-demand audio and video, and that you'll find at twit.tv slash windows. Download a copy of audio or video, or better yet, subscribe. We have, uh, you know, we're everywhere. Find your, you know, favorite podcast player, Pocket Cast or Overcast or iTunes or Google Play or whatever it is, and, and subscribe. That way you'll have every episode the minute it comes out on Wednesday. Thanks to Paul Therat and Mary Jo Foley. You'll find Mary Jo at uh, uh, allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet blog. You'll find Paul at therat.com. That's his blog. He also, uh, well, more than a blog, it's his news site because he's got other people there too, not just Paul. And then, of course, his books are at uh, leanpub.com. And he's working on the updated field guide to Windows 10, as you heard. That's exciting. Do they get, if they, they do the online version, your updates go right up immediately, right? Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's free. So if you bought the book at any time, you're always you up to date. Nice. I get yeah. those posters too. I really, really yeah. like those if they're still available. Yeah. All right, kids, we're done. Thanks for joining us. And I will see you next time right here on Windows Weekly. Bye bye.